In this video, we're going to take one of our Christmas icon shapes, this is the reindeer, and we are going to decorate it. Now, I said decorate, not paint, because we're, we're going to do a little bit more than just painting it up. We're going to try to add a little bit of electronics to give it a uh, 3D effect and to make it a little bit more visually interesting. But before we get started, I want to build a paint stand that I can place the icon a little bit higher so I'm not having to bend over on the work table to uh, decorate it. So this isn't going to be anything fancy. I'm just getting some scrap wood. This is a 2x2. Two two. It's about uh, 16 inches long and it's just a scrap piece of uh, ha uh, 3 quarter inch plywood. You can really use anything that you like, but uh, this is just what I happen to find. What I'm going to do is cut an angle off of here so we can glue our icon to it while we're decorating it so it's at eye level and uh, then I'm going to screw this to the base. So I cut this angle, it doesn't really matter, just to edit something pleasing uh, so it's the object is facing you. Uh, this is at 22 and a half degrees, you can do whatever, you can play with it and decide whatever angle you want. So now we're just going to need to find the placement of where I'm going to do the screws. Normally I would have pre-drill the holes for the screws but because I use specs, construction screws, because um, they work really well. Uh, without having to pre-drill, but for this I want to know the placement of exactly where I'm going to be putting it. Uh, so I'm going to pre-drill it so I know where to screw from the back side of it. So we'll be drilling from the bottom with the screws coming up into the piece. So we want the screw to bypass this piece loosely so it grabs tightly to our 2x2 two two and pulls it down tight. You want to make the holes in the base about the same size as your bit. So if you ever want to figure out which drill bit you want, you just put your screw, take your screw, put it in front of your uh, drill bit, and if you can see the drill bit, that means it's going to be a little bit bigger. Now if you're pre-drilling for the screw to go into your item and want it to be tight, you don't want your drill bit to be thicker than the center of your screw, so you're subtracting out the teeth of the uh, screw. Uh, and make it smaller that way you you're eliminating a lot of the wood and that's how uh, splitting occurs is because it's trying to go through a solid piece of wood whereas if you drill pre-drill you're taking out a lot of that pressure from the screw but these screws right here uh, do really well uh, about uh, self-piloting themselves We got a little bit of glue here because glue is technically stronger in some cases than a most mechanical fastening. It will rip the wood for, before it rips the glue. All right, we'll give that a few minutes for the glue to set, and then we'll get we'll move on to the next step. So, like I said in the beginning, we're, only, we're, we're decorating our icon today. We're not just going to paint it. And by that, we're going to add a red nose to our reindeer to make it Rudolph. So, what we're going to do to light it up is uh, I've got these tea lights here. Uh, this is more of the fancier light that uh, is waterproof that you can even float in pools for weddings and stuff like that. But it's just a little tea light that turns on and off. It's an LED light with some batteries, but it, and it's got o rings so that makes it even fancier. So it's waterproof and it takes two cell batteries and you just screw it to turn it on. So what we're going to try to do is get this light, recess it into the back of our shape and for the light to stick out as far as we can out through the front here. Um, so it's going to take three different drilling procedures to get that. First I want to drill a pilot hole from the front side so I can get center of where I want the light to protrude from. Then we'll flip it over. We we'll use our Fossner bit and use that pilot hole that we created to drill, not all the way through, but deep enough so that this light recesses down into the icon shape. And that way the light can protrude out to the front. Then the lastly, we're going to use our uh, bigger drill bit, probably from the front side. And this is the same diameter, or a little bit bigger than our uh, LED light, so that it will come, so we can push it as far as we can through without exposing the base of the light. Alright, now the fun stuff. We're going to get to painting. So this is it long enough to set, uh, the glue to set, so I'm going to clamp this. The reason why I had a bigger base and I'll set it so I can clamp it to my work surface. 
now we got to mount our workpiece to our uh, stand. But I don't want to put any glues or anything on the back of it uh, that might damage it. So the way, what I usually do is I take some blue tape, put it on the back of whatever I'm working on. Normally I use uh, CA glue, but for this I'm going to try hot glue on here because this is the end grain and it might hold a little better. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you a little trick. If you don't want to wait for your hot glue gun to heat up and you just need to do a quick gluing, I just get my Zippo lighter. This is a butane lighter insert for my Zippo. Just heat up your glue stick and then just rub it. Need to melt a little bit more than that. Just gonna put a bunch of glue on there. Perfect. So the blue tape, we stick it on. So the reason I put the blue tape on the figure finish piece is because uh, at the end you can just rip the tape off and it won't damage your finished piece but the glue will stick to the blue tape and hold it so uh, there it's cooled so it's stuck on there so now we've got our piece that's higher up to us so you can see a lot better uh, if you want to get that detail and you don't have to hold it too because I hate trying to hold stuff and paint it so that's why I wanted to uh, show you how we make these simple stands now the other thing I haven't talked about yet is we're going to use a ping pong ball for Rudolph's nose. So we're going to have to paint that also. So we're going to glue that to our base. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to glue this off to the side just in case we have some overspray. Uh, I don't want it to get on the nose. So I'm going to do it over here. I love this butane lighter insert. Because it's just a regular Zippo and then they sell the insert for it. And then we're going to stick our ping pong ball in there. That's probably not necessary. But when you start spraying it, it the ball is going to roll around and you're not going to be able to hold it. And I'm going to test it. I hope we'll do it right now. I hope we can get the uh, spray paint to lightly go on so it's still and transparent so that uh, the light can shine through. So I'm going to do a light dusting on it first. That should be perfect. All right, we'll let that dry. Okay, we're gonna start with a little bit of satin ivory silk. We're gonna start with the antlers first because what I'm gonna do is paint paint it, and then when I paint the brown for the body, I want to kind of overspray a little bit into the white. That way, it looks like the fur is going uh, over the uh, antlers rather than the antlers going over the fur. Uh, that's the reason why we're starting with the. Uh, antler colors so we're just going to give it the edges a good paint first just give it a light coat if you miss some spots that's okay you can always just come back uh, within an hour and paint some more the end grain of the MDF really soaks it up and it's going to look a little different um, I'm going to have future videos on how to stop that but for this project we're not going to worry about it as much we're just going to go with go with it and just paint and it is what it is but we'll have uh, future tutorials on how to avoid all that okay so after lunch we went ahead and put the second coat on the antlers I'm, I skipped ahead we're going to use our uh, cardboard to shield and we're going to start putting our brown on which is Kona uh, gloss Kona brown so we're going to spray that on Just to give a little bit of spray there up the antlers so it's not a, a line. Now what we're going to do is use our heat gun. I'd recommend using a uh, hair dryer because this gets a little too hot, but this is all I've got in the shop right now. So we're going to turn that on and dry, help speed the process up. While we wait for the reindeer to dry, paint to dry, let's take a look and see how our nose is doing here. Let's drill a little hole out and then we'll stick the light in and see how well that comes through. That'll work. 
I think that looks pretty good. It's kind of bright in here now, but uh, that should give the effect of a red nose. So the paint's still a little tacky, but we can move on to uh, some of the ear detail uh, while the rest of it's drying. That won't affect it any. So what we'll do is uh, I'm going to make a stencil out of paper uh, to spray with. I'm just going to first just make a stencil of what the ear, ear shape is, just so we can just draw it, what we're going to cut out. So we have the ear shape that we traced right here. So where I want the spray paint to come, I think I want it to be like that. So this is the area that I want to have, uh, probably make it white. I guess we'll just go with the white in the ear. Probably should be pink, but we'll just go with white. And since we're just using a piece of paper that's cut, uh, it's kind of flappy like that, I'm going to uh, put a little bit of tape and we'll fold it over to uh, strengthen it up just a little bit. Could use thick cardboard. That might work, uh, but this was what was close at hand here. See some of that tape is going over our stencil, so we'll just cut it again. And I'll just put one more little piece of tape there. It's just to give it strength, that's all. I'm going to trim it up here. All right. So now let's go back over to our deer. Now I've been using Rust-Oleum paint because that's just what I had in the shop. Um, but I've started to transfer over to Ace Hardware's uh, premium paint, mostly because of the tip that it has. You can rotate the tip to have your spray either vertical or horizontal um, right there. And uh, it just the spray pattern comes so much finer, and I've really come to like uh, this paint. So I've used this more. Uh, and this is just white gloss enamel. Lay our stencil down like that. And we don't, it doesn't have to be right laying right on it. I'm, it's hovering a little bit above so we can get a little bit of underspray for a transition. There you go. That's one. Now we'll just flip it over and do the other side. Just make sure it doesn't touch since we got paint on it already. There you go. We can fix that up a little bit, but yeah, that's just get a little bit of the uh, detail for the ear. So we're getting to a point now we're going to have to let this dry before we can put any of the details on, like the eyes. But I did want to put a little bit of uh, detailing on the bottom, a little shading on the bottom of the antlers right here. And we're just going to use a little bit darker uh, color. This is uh, khaki. And we'll see what that looks like. I do want to protect the rest of it so it doesn't spray on it. Put a little shield right there. And then just kind of a little bit of spray at the bottom of the antler there. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Not much. Just a little bit. There you go. So I pulled another reindeer out of my stock because I wanted to make a stencil for the eyeballs. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to do an upside down. I need to get the... Basically what we're going to do is we're going to continue the muzzle up here and then we're going to add the eyeballs behind it like it's looking at it but I need this angle of curve so I'm going to use the bottom here to continue it so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do an upside down stencil and we'll make our circle here and that will be the top part of the muzzle like that see we're going to turn it around like that so that's going to be here and then we just need to do the eyeballs which we're going to do we're going to make them look like, and what we'll do, let's just do one, and we will fold it in half, how about that? And then we only have to cut out one. We just got to make one eyeball that we like. There you go. And then uh, let me cut it out and I'll show you. 
And I did get my good scissors. I love these things. I think I got them in a state sale. They're so sharp. And there you have it. There's our mask that we're going to put over and spray the eyes. So we're back at the reindeer. I've laid the stencil down. I think I've centered it. Not really sure, but let's get close here. I am going to, looks like a ghost. Reindeer ghost. I'm going to use uh, just something to hold the stencil down right here in the middle. We'll do one side at a time. Got my white. We gotta let that dry and then we'll add the pupils and then we'll add a little line on the bottom too. So that's the beginning of the eyes. We'll let that dry and we'll get some pupils on it. Good morning, it's the next day and we've given our reindeer enough time to dry of all our uh, base coating of the spray paint. And we're gonna use a little bit of detail using a paint pen. I haven't tried this brand before, it's the Krylon Shortcuts paint pen. Really haven't found a good a paint pen quality that I like, but we're gonna give this a try and see how we like it. What we're gonna do is use it to just create a little bit of uh, definition around the eyes here. Just to clean up the edges a little bit. I do like this paint pen, it has a chisel tip and a long, uh, if you can see here, it's a chisel tip and it uh, has a long uh, flat tip on it also. So you can do fine detail work and uh, big areas. And the paint flow is pretty good too on it. It's not bad. Not bad at all. And we'll add the pupil here. Fill that in. I think we'll do the same for the ear, the inner ear. We're just going to do just a little detail, just a little bit. Perfect. All right. Now the last step, we'll just add the, what we're going to call electronics. I actually got the uh, glue gun out for this project. So what we're going to do is just glue the top part of the light. We can turn it on and off by twisting the back, but we're just going to glue the inside part and stick it from underneath. So we'll stick it in that recess that we made earlier. Push it all the way through. There you go. I don't know if you can see the, the lights turning on. Let me get this stuck on there and then we will, I'll show you. So fr from underneath you can see we just stuck the, uh, the light into the, our recess. So the top part's glued to the body, but you still have access to turning the, the back of it to turn the light on and off. Kind of like a knob there. So that works out just fine for our purposes there. And then you can see the light coming through. So again, we'll just get our red nose. We'll put a little bit of hot glue on the back of it. And we'll stick it on right up over the light. And there you have it. We got our Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So if you like this, our Rudolph cut out and like to do one for yourself, go to our website at trail47.com forward slash pop up and you can purchase your Christmas icon pack and it has five different designs that you can decorate and create your own masterpiece. Stay tuned and we'll be having future videos on painting the other shapes. 
Remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.